sometimes you're in the middle of nowhere, you're on a trek, you're doing some photos or a video, and you literally need to carry gear that is just above and beyond the day pack that you would normally carry. It's the stuff you'd need because you're not close to the car, you're not close to anywhere where you can just drop it and leave it and go back and collect it when you actually need to use it. You've got to take it up there with you. And if that's the top of a mountain or it's in the middle of nowhere, it's in a field in the middle of nowhere, you just need all the stuff with you. It's just not practical to leave it somewhere else. And for that, you need a bit of a workhorse when it comes to a backpack in order to contain all that stuff. So today, what we're gonna look at is we're gonna have an overview of the Lowepro Whistler 450BP AW2. So that's the backpack, all weather two. It's this massive beauty that's on my back at the minute. So let's take a look at that now. So the Whistler, it's a 450 backpack, so it's really big, it's thick, it's a sizable amount. I mean, it's way more than my hand deep um, when it comes to actual gear. Uh, and it is, it is an absolute beast of a pack. So what, what is there in this pack that makes it so good and so useful for people like you and me who need to take stuff here, there and everywhere? So it's got comfortable straps, these are pretty, pretty cushioning. Um, they're, they're very strong and strenuous. It's also got risers on the back to pull the gear closer to you. Um, one thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have a removable uh, waist belt. So this waist belt will hang if you don't like to do your waist belts up. Though there is webbing on one side and there is a useful pocket on the other. The zips, zips are all YKK, high quality zips. Um, they're thick and, and chunky zipper on the inside of the pack, on the back of the pack where your back is. Um, and then they're slightly smaller with pull tabs on the front and on the sides. So we've got this pocket on the top of the bag here, which is sort of half moon opening. And when you open it out, we've got a, pocket, a mesh pocket on the inside, which contains the rain cover, which is attached via a little cord. This can be undone and taken out and then kept separately somewhere else if you need to, but when you buy the pack, this is where that rain cover comes. And then in here, we've got the top of the camera box itself, and that effectively is the top, is the bottom of this uh, pocket. The pocket is large enough to put in a bit of clothing, some socks maybe, um, along with some food, drink, water, etc. Incidentally also, it has a 15 inch laptop pocket, which is, runs all the way down the front here to a roughly about here. Um, and it fits comfortably a 15 inch laptop. It also has a pull strap, which when you pull, that will uh, eject the laptop out easily so that you can actually pull the laptop out from inside there. Again, all the zips on here are all YKK uh, and they're all high quality and they're all really well made and really well finished. There is no like, sort of threads or anything like that that you can see on it. The outer actual um, material itself is a very heavy duty ripstop. Um, it, it's probably got some kind of water resistance to it itself. That's before you put on the uh, rain cover, so you're probably gonna get a bit of shower resistance from the pack itself as well. So let's have a look and see what it looks like inside. So from the inside, We'll turn it on its back, we'll lay it on its back here. To get into the, into the actual camera bag itself, we've got a carry handle here if you want to hold it. But to get into it, we need to get the straps, turn them inside out, like so. Make sure that the uh, belt straps, because these don't come off, are folded to the middle, and that exposes the um, large orange zip, which is also YKK. And that allows you to then open up the inside. It's a two-stage door, door to the back, um, so it's hinged in the middle, which allows you to then just get part of what you want to get rather than opening, opening the whole bag, um, and that allows you to just get anything that you need from inside here. Um, on the inside of the pocket, you've got a, a, on the inside of the panel, you've got a pocket which is big enough to put in cables, passports, that kind of thing if you need to, um, and it's got a, a um, a lycra zip defender there and then you've got two lycra pockets here which allow you to put memory cards in um, and then further down on the bag itself on the inside of the pocket 
you've got a larger pocket which allows things like notebooks um, and, and anything else really that you want to put in there. Again, it's got a Defender pocket inside as well. So on the inside of the bag, it is very deep. Um, basically, you get uh, a modular system and you can put these in any which way you want. Uh, some of these dividers come with little pockets inside. Again, like the Low Pro um, flip side Trek, I think it's a great idea because basically you've got an extra little pocket to put different things in there. See, I've got some bongo ties in this one. Um, and you can also use uh, some of the same Whistler type packages. So these are the go bags that Lopro designed specifically for this uh, bag. Again, you can put these in any different way you want. And there are pads that allow you to protect your system, like your camera. There are also, um, I'll just pull this one out. There's also a small pad that comes with it for protecting the remote control for a um, drone. So you've got a pad there which allows you to do that. It's, it is particularly deep, I would say. It, it easily takes a pro body on the inside. Um, and it easily takes uh, a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, the, the white um, Canon 70 to 200 millimeter attached to the pro body camera at the same time with no issues whatsoever. And there's no, it doesn't fall above this zip line at all. So you end up with the, the pack shutting flush. Uh, again, at the bottom, you've got room once you've got everything set up for pouches. I mean, I've got a gear pouch and I've also got a, um, a filter pouch inside here, uh, which is basically just uh, set so that they're down the sides, out the way, um, and you've got pouches down either side here as well. So let's have a look and move on to another part of the bag and let's see what else there is. So we'll zip this back up. The bag is freestanding, so that means when it's stood up on its own, if I just stand it up and let go of it, it will stand up and it will stay stood up. Um, and that is because the bottom is a hard wearing material uh, and it is very quite, it is quite rigid and quite uh, solid in its construction. So it's the box itself keeps it its shape basically and it carries it pretty well. Um, on the, um, let's have a look, as you're wearing it, it will be on your left hand side. So on your left hand side, you've got a pleated pocket on the inside. Let me just get that open. There we go, we've got a pleated pocket on the inside. In essence, what that's got is it's a short pocket, it's quite narrow, um, and it's got a couple of different sleeves in there for separating things out. Um, again, it's covered by the pack itself as well, the zip, so it runs uh, quite invisible. And then uh, on the front of this bag, we've also got another pocket which opens out. Let me just open that out completely. So you can see what that looks like. Okay, so we'll just unzip this, like so. And inside this pocket here, there's another mesh pocket, which is short, it's about hands width. Um, and then inside here is a larger gear pocket. And basically what this gear pocket does is it is waterproof. So it, you can put wet gear in here and not worry about getting any of the electronics wet. Uh, so it's a separation pocket for the rest of your gear. There's also a little sleeve in there, which I'm assuming is for poles or for a umbrella of some kind or something else that can slip in there and just slide straight through. Um, and at the bottom of this pack here is a water hole, effectively to expel some of the water. On the outside of the pack, um, if I just grab this zip here, um, there is also, as it runs all the way around, there is also an expansion to that pocket. So that pocket will expand out slightly and give you a little bit more room and let you put more gear inside. On the front, you've got these clips, front and side. So there you go, you've got front and you've got sides as well. And you've got two loops as well. Uh, and those gear loops are designed for, well, they're actually made for ice axes. Um, but of course you can put anything you want in there. I've had gimbals inside all this, um, um, a strap to the side of it, strap to the front of it. You've also got straps at the side, which allow you to strap on monopods, tripods, etc., etc. And there is also a very heavy duty sort of loop at the bottom, which doesn't come off. So you've got something to slip a leg down between. So you can slip a couple of legs in or a leg out or one leg in and two legs out. And that stops it from going anywhere. And then you can slip 
take your tag across the, your clip across the top and it secures it pretty well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a great pack and it's very, very useful. And uh, yeah, one thing I would want to mention is that these straps, these orange straps do come off if you need them to. You can actually just unhook them and take them off and feed them back through um, if you don't need them on at all and then just end up with a clean backpack. You don't end up with these orange straps on. Um, this pack, like I say, is designed as a trekking pack as well. So it allows you to go further distances rather than um, just like sort of a day pack where you would be going out, coming back, and you wouldn't be a massive amount of distance from a car. You could easily put ice axes on the back, plus a tent, change your clothes, etc., plus all your camera gear as well. Well, to recap, would I recommend you getting the Whistler BP450 AW2? Yes, in short, I would. It's an incredibly good backpack. It's not oversized for its, for its duties. Um, it's got some great features to it. It is um, a, great, a great piece of kit. It's very well made. The one thing I do wish is that this, this strap came off um, and allowed you to move it or remove it, but it doesn't. Um, so it just hangs basically like it does. But to be honest with you, that's like a massive nitpick. Um, it's definitely not, definitely not an issue when it comes to using the backpack. It's not going to stop you from using it how it's supposed to be used. It's not going to stop you from doing anything. Does it really matter in the great scheme of things? No, not really. I would say I'm probably trying to find something wrong with it rather than it, there actually being anything really wrong with the backpack itself. Um, it's comfortable. The straps are comfortable, the load bearing straps on it are brilliant. Um, it fits perfectly around you, like if you want to uh, do it up. All the clips are really, really good. Uh, it even comes with a whistle, and that is basically an emergency whistle, as a normal sort of trekking backpack would. And, and that, I guess that's where you're coming from with this. This is a backpack that's designed for long hikes and long treks where you're carrying a lot of gear. And you want a gimbal on the side of the pack and you've got tripods and a monopod or whatever it is you want strapped to you and you're really really trekking in to try and get you know that shot or that video or that scene or that or, or whatever it is you're trying to do and you need all the gear that you need to take with you you can't go back as i said before you can't go back and get it you're in the, a boat or whatever and and i guess that's what this is about this is the sort of stuff that you take to say the top of a mountain to film stuff or shoot photos or whatever and you could also strap a tent to the back of it and you could camp out and you've got all the gear and everything you need to be and do what you need to do with you. So yeah, I would, I would definitely, definitely recommend this backpack. Uh, it came in at 244 pounds for me. It, it varies in price. I've seen it as low as 199 pounds um, uh, and I've seen it as high as 299 pounds um, and more. And, and yeah, I think, I think you pay for what you get and I think it is one of the, one of the better backpacks unless you're going to go up to uh, Pneumatic's Peter McKinnon version which is like 500 quid, uh, which is massively expensive for a backpack, for a camera backpack, although I'm told absolutely amazing. Um, it's just a little bit out of my price range and I'm not really, I don't see I'm really going to get much more out of that than I'm going to get out of this. Am I going to get 300 pounds more of usefulness out of that backpack than I am out of this one? I, I, I tend to think not. I think it's, it's, it's a great backpack, but I think this is, this is one I would recommend. It's, um, it's by a well-known brand um, that's got a lot of extras and a lot of things that you can put in there. There's a lot of little pockets and things that will fit inside it uh, that are built specifically for it. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's a great backpack. You won't hesitate to, to, to love having it if you do go ahead and get it. So with that, I hope you did enjoy it and I hope it was useful and it sort of gave you an insight into what a larger format backpack will do. Um, as I say, this will take a pro body. It has no problems in taking anything um, that, that you want to throw at it. It will fit just about everything you need in there and is fully customizable. Um, and, uh, and it's got a few hidden little extras in there that are just useful, but you didn't realize you needed them until you've actually got them. So like I say, hope you found it useful. Hope it was good for you and that it gave you an insight into the Lopro 450 Whistler. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.